Welcome to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me. This video today continues my series on teaching English on Zoom. And in today's video, we'll be looking at the whiteboard feature of Zoom. So let's jump into our Zoom lesson. And um, actually, one of the first things I need to say is there are actually two different whiteboard features in Zoom. Uh, one of them I find very helpful and the other one not so much. So the one that I don't find helpful is when you're looking along the bottom of the screen, you should find one that says whiteboards. That's the one that I'm not a big fan of. Not going to talk about it right now, um, but that is one that I'll make another video on and think about maybe some uses of it. But I don't tend to use that one very much myself. The one I do tend to use is if you go to share screen and you will find usually it's the second option along the top on the basic menu, uh, you'll find one that says whiteboard. And when you open that, hopefully you get something that looks like this. If you get something that looks a bit different, um, then it might be that Zoom has opened the other whiteboards feature. Um, I know it does sometimes do that when you go through this way. Um, so if that's the case, uh, you might want to find a different tool. Um, I would recommend Microsoft Paint is a good option actually um, because it has the same features here and actually several more. Um, so you can just screen share with paint. Um, one of the reasons why I like this whiteboard and not the other one that's available is with this whiteboard, you are in control. Only you can um, add things to this unless you give the students control to add things as well. Um, so if you're trying to achieve something in the class, that might be quite important uh, for you. Um, not to have everybody being able to draw whatever they want at once. The main thing that I actually use the whiteboard for is uh, doing feedback. Um, so when I'm doing that, uh, what I would do is select the text uh, tool and um, a nice color that we want to use. Let's use a nice cooling green. Uh, no, actually let's do blue. Um, Green tends to be one of the more difficult colors to see. So then I um, just type what the, um, what the sentence was. I usually gap where the error was uh, rather than actually um, writing an incorrect sentence that the students might understand to be correct. Um, and then, uh, of course, we can elicit from the students what needs to go here. Um, probably the most obvious answer would be went, but when we gap it, there is um, the possibility of other answers uh, that can be discussed, such as I drove to the shop yesterday, I ran to the shop yesterday, um, I jogged to the shop yesterday, all kinds of other possibilities that could go in there. Um, another thing that the whiteboard is quite useful for potentially is to do um, timelines with the students. Um, I always think if you're going to use a timeline, it's actually really helpful to construct it in front of the students rather than just finding a nice graphic of a timeline in a book. Uh, much better to actually take the time to show students um, how it looks. Uh, so we can, um, my drawing skills are really not particularly great, uh, but we can start labeling up our um, timeline. So this point is now, and um, with, let's say we're doing the past simple. So something that happened in the past, it wasn't continued. Um, so yeah, we can use that to draw our our timeline. Um, we could use it to draw all other manner of things, of course. Um, you could um, draw things for students to, to guess what it is. Um, we do have a few other tools. You have a, like a laser 
uh, pen pointer that you can use um, or that can be an arrow instead if you really want to draw the student's attention to uh, different things on the screen. Um, if you uh, make a mistake while you're drawing you do have an eraser so you, we can uh, get rid of this uh, X if it's in the wrong place. Um, you can undo and redo um, things as necessary. There is a clear um, button as well that will clear everything that's on there um, and the well you can save it as well if necessary there are some more options as well um, and you can see who can share uh, what's there and um, yeah so once you're once you've done everything that you need to do there um, then you just stop sharing and you go back to your uh, Zoom lesson. So that is basically how to use the whiteboard um, in very simple steps. So um, you have your practice Zoom account. Why don't you go over to uh, your Zoom account, open up a uh, meeting, see if you can locate the whiteboard under share screen and um, see if you do get a whiteboard that looks the same or looks different and then just have a play about with it and, and see um, what you can actually put on it um, so that when you come to do your lessons you're ready to use the whiteboard to tackle things like correction or drawing timelines. So thank you very much for watching the video if you liked it please do give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do um, subscribe uh, if you know anyone who might find these videos useful, please do put them onto uh, this series. Um, I hope that it will help many people um, teach English on Zoom. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do add them to the comments because I always do my best to get back to every last comment. And um, I will see you in the next video.